these objects look like normal yellowish glassware and jewellery. But look what happens when the lights go out. The glass glows because it contains uranium, and because it contains uranium, it is radioactive. Uranium has been added to glass since Roman times to add colour and fluorescence. But one of the greatest makers of uranium glass ever lived and worked just a few miles from me. Meet George Davidson, the Geordie radioactive glass maker. He wasn't a chemist or a scientist. He was a glass making genius still famous around the world today. He said, Twinned with Newcastle upon Tyne in straddling the River Tyne is at the heart of North East England. Famed for its coal, football, and bridges, it was one of the most productive areas for glass making in the 19th century. Why is that? Well, making glass takes a lot of heat. In the 17th century, King James I said you could no longer burn trees for powering glass making furnaces. He needed the wood to build his armada of ships. Like today, where policy is shifting industry from fossil fuels to renewables, glassmakers had to find another way. Crucially, the Northeast had an abundance of an even better fuel, coal. Ironically, a former naval man, Sir Robert Mansell, had a real passion for glass and invented the coal-powered glass furnace right here in Newcastle. Coupled with vast local expertise in engineering, industry mining, plus a mature ship and rail infrastructure, this place was the perfect location for a new breed of glassmaker. In the mid-1800s, George Davidson had already mastered the building and butcher's trades. There were no light bulbs in those days. The de facto way to light a home or an office was through paraffin lamps. These were produced by the millions and the delicate glass often broke. George, ever the businessman, spotted a gap in the market and opened his factory on Teams in 1867 at this very location. Now just a brick building and a scrappy dirt. Capitalising on the unique attributes of the area, he quickly diversified into making high-quality pressed glass pieces for the middle class, making quality glassware affordable. This move pivoted George to becoming the largest glassmaker in Britain. What interests us most in George's story happened in 1889. George and his son Thomas created the Pearline Glassware. Its distinctive colourful glass with highly ornate details soon wowed the Victorian social set. The most popular piece was the primrose yellow variation, strikingly yellow green moving from transparent at the bottom to opaque white frosting on the top. This was David's signature item. Their trick, though, was in the chemistry. 
While Shiranian glass had been made since Roman times, they souped up the mix. Davidson glass contains double the uranium that competitor products use, making their glassware extra colourful and extra fluorescent. In the dimly lit Victorian homes, pearline yellow literally glowed amongst the other fineries of the turn of the century home. George's company was a cornerstone of what is now one of the largest industrial estates in Europe, Team Valley Trading Estate. Covering over 700 acres and employing over 20,000 people, it is a busy hub of industry and commerce. I should know, I used to work here. Mirroring modern times, Davidson's success waxed and waned over the decades due to geopolitics and global economics. Thomas lobbied hard against the unfair import and export tariffs. They even traded glass for butter at one point. Into the 20th century, they diversified to meet the demand from areas as diverse as glass for radars and fighter planes and cat's eyes for runways. When the factory closed in 1987, it was quickly consumed by more modern concerns. Today, there is a scrapyard and a car parts retailer. However, without visionaries like George and his radioactive glass, there wouldn't be this magnificent shrine to industry like the one behind me today. So here lies George, along with his wife, three sons and two daughters, at a cemetery in his beloved Gateshead. Not only did he found his many businesses here, he was also a popular mayor of Gateshead. Dubbed the Oppenheimer of Victorian tableware, George and his team created a process and a product that would stand the test of time, a Victorian glow stick you could drink tea from. Now, over a hundred years later, his glass, Geordie Gold, is the most collectible amongst the new breed of uranium glass collectors. Some pieces going for hundreds of pounds. Collectors prize the glass because it symbolizes the complex interplay of art and science. George would probably raise a smile at the new breed of entrepreneurs, all vinted and Etsy, smiling at their use of his original work to once again turn a profit and fill a gap in the burgeoning radioactive glass market. We've heard the story of the Geordie glassmaker, but next time we delve deeper into the world of uranium glass, I speak with an expert uranium glass dealer and see the glow and the Geiger firsthand. We ask burning questions such as how was the pearline glass so different? Why did production end? Why has uranium glass become a collector's craze? And how do you spot it? We also deal with the obvious question of is it safe to handle? Make sure you subscribe to be alerted when we next chase the glow.